here's another podcast from the Pod Bros Network. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Jean Pod Van Dam Cast. We are in studio, but I forgot our equipment at my house. <laughs> so, in case those that don't know, I am also a part of the Accidental Wrestling fan, and we have been doing commentary for Detroit Style Wrestling, and I just totally forgot to bring the equipment back in the studio. Whoops. So, uh, this is where we get into our shameless self-promotion. In order for me to <laughs> never forget this again, Please go to patreon.com slash podbros. We have a Jean Pod Van Dam cast here or there where you get a super secret episode for only $1. Why am I bringing this up? So that I can buy another mixer and some microphones so I don't ever have to do this again. So we are using our makeshift uh, lapel mic <laughs> into my phone. Hopefully everything's working well. And we are uh, going to be reviewing a very special ep- – um, well – we're back. We're back at it. But before we get into that a little bit more, Amazon, guess what? Our link, you don't have to scroll down. Our link's up top now. Oh, so you damn. can use, go to podrose.com, use our Amazon link. It is right there. Imagine right. how much time you'll save. I know. You save those extra few seconds so that you can get on Amazon using our link. doesn't cost you anything, but you help us out. Also, T public, T E E dot P U B slash L I C slash pod bros. And that, that's about it. So we are reviewing, get this, Blackwater. Finally, this yes. 2018 rated R one hour and 44 minute action drama thriller in which a deep cover operative awakens to find himself in prison in a CIA black site on a mu- submarine. That's pretty good. Same old story, you know. Yeah, same old story. We have Dolph Lundgren playing Marco, Jean-Claude Van Damme playing Wheeler. Kind of weird that he has Tom Lundgren Billing has Tom when he's Billing. in the movie for 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, very weird. Patrick Kilpatrick played Ferris, <laughs> the Sandman. The Sandman yep. came back. <laughs> he looks so different. He does look different, dude. He's still uh, imposing looking, though. Oh, he was, yeah. Alice Penzia played Edward Rhodes. You might know him from The Sopranos as Mikey Palmas. Oh, holy shit. Brotherhood is Mayor Frank Pans something. Sorry. (laughs) It cut off. Uh, House of Cards, Marty Spinella. The Jack Ryan series from Amazon as the Secretary of Defense. Pure as Sterling McKay. Uh, Inferno by Dante, the film, is the speaker from the Seventh Circle of Hell. They made a Dante's Inferno movie? I guess so. Let's see how old this is. Oh, it's 2018. Wow. Is it a documentary? The Divine Comedy by Adventure Drama Family. So it must be kind of religious. Like an, oh, yeah. Maybe? Catholic then? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like, Dante's Inferno isn't yeah, a it's religious not really, canon. It's yeah. not. Yeah, exactly. It's highest just, fiction. Yeah. Huh. Candy Tugwell played Riley. She is in A Wicked Vendetta as Victoria, Altitude as Passenger. Oh, man. Uh, with uh, Dolph Lundgren and hey. Chuck Liddell. That looks uh, pretty sweet there. Oh, yeah. We'll have to say that for our Dolph cast. Yeah, man. Home Again, Bar Patron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Manor as Eva Clark. Is that Kevin Nash? I, I am oh, fairly that positive Kevin that's Nash. Kevin Nash. <laughs> it is. Ooh, it's a scary film. Oh, man. Oh, Nash cast. Hell, Yeah. All right, and that that kind of looks like it's it for a dangerous date as Molly. Ooh, another uh, oh, Blackwater. Oh yeah, Blackwater. She was in that. No way. Jasmine Waltz played Cassie Taylor. Jasmine's in. Oh, she was Boxcar Woman in Joe Dirt too. <laughs> uh, Agent Nicole Diaz in Demon. Cherry Shaw in Poker Run. Live to ride, ride to die. The cover for that looks like a Walmart (laughs) t-shirt. It does. Uh, Forgiven TBD. Oh, geez, that looks really bad. The cover art for this looks like the cover art from a shirt that you find on Facebook. (laughs) Yeah, where they have like a celebrity and it's poorly photoshopped. Yes, yes. I I hate those so much. I love the people that think that that's real. (laughs) I know. I'm not following this man on Facebook anymore because of his political views. Live Nude Girls as Diva. That that sounds pretty good. Yeah, let's see what that's all about. It's a comedy. Oh. Oh, Not as cool. 
Murder yeah. 101, Detective Brown, Bump and Grind is Veronica. <laughs> and that looks about it. We have Chris Van Dam in here again playing yes. Kagan. John Posey is Captain Darrow's. Courtney B. Turk, Melissa Ballard. Aaron O'Connor is Ellis. What? I thought he was Ryan. Ellis Ryan? I don't know. That's weird. Cathal Pendred as Dax. Lance E. Nichols as Buchanan. And that's good. And guard number two. Guard number my two. My favorite character. The director was Pashi Patriki, and writers were Chad Law. Uh, who also wrote the story and others. And I didn't know that this was a story. Really? Yeah. Tagline, some secrets never surface. Ooh, that's a good one. one. That's one of the best ones we've had in a while. Good job. Good job. Getting into it. Right away I see, you know, it's like Lionsgate Films. Oh, okay, that's Mm -hmm. cool. And then I see Saban Films. I go, oh. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen their modern uh, film. Yeah, did they do that he, for Power Rangers? They might have done another Van Damme film, if I'm not mistaken, recently. I don't know. It's just uh, Saban kind of has one of those names with it in Hollywood. I, it's mm-hmm. just everyone goes, oh, okay. I think they used to be known for basically... Power Rangers. Yeah. Hiring non-SAG actors yes. and whatnot so that they could pretty much do what they want with them. And then go, oh, no one else is going to hire you. The Power Rangers were all uh, non-screen actors, yeah. though, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they were. So we open up to what looks like Van Dam on the ground. He's in some type of prison cell. He bangs on the wall. Dolph answers. They're chatting back and forth about how long they've been in there. Van Dam has only been in for a day, and Dolph has stopped counting. <laughs> it's a burial ground, except there ain't no ground out here. You're 30,000 leagues under the sea, my man. <laughs> And then Dolph asks him, what's the last thing you remember? We're in Mobile, Alabama. And then we get some shots, and I go, hey, I know that highway right there. They're at some hotel motel. A lady tells him to set his keys down and the gun. Are you going to shoot me? <laughs> and then he takes control of her, and she has a bottle opener. And he's like, oh, standard issue. <laughs> and then they start kissing. And it looks like they're swapping info and kisses, and business can wait. Tell me, Mr. Wheeler, are all of your partners this lucky? Lucky? You haven't tried the breakfast here. <laughs> she, uh, they, they, they do it. Then they're in bed, laying there the next day. She takes off. He looks out the window and watches after her. He plugs in his SIM card and his phone, puts the clip back into his gun, and then gets a knock at the door. And then again. So he's like, uh-oh, something's up. He looks out the window. There's, like, no one there. He opens it. A maid's knocking on the door. And he's like, oh, come back in an hour. And then these dudes just start shooting up the place, and they get the maid instead of Van Damme. Yeah, she probably should have, like, jumped out of the way. Yeah, seriously. She was just like, ah, with yeah. her hands in the yeah, air. Yeah, man, she just <laughs> got blasted. Van Damme takes out one dude, then another off the balcony. He shoots a dude point blank in the head. Yeah. Uh, others are shooting at him. He grabs one of their guns and shoots back. People are freaking out everywhere with the right to do so. He tells the girl <laughs> from the beginning to go back inside the uh, restaurants. More guys get out of a car and start shooting up the place. The girl that was running around, she drops the drive that she had <laughs> in this exchange that they had going on. She goes after it while he covers her. One last bullet hits her in the shoulder, and uh, Van Damme's out of ammo. Which uh, is unusual in a uh, Van Damme film. Yeah, seriously. A guy walks up to uh, this girl, Ballard, and then he shoots her pretty much while she's down on the ground. Van Damme's like, oh, shit, she's dead. He jumps into a truck, pushes down on the gas pedal with his hand, and takes off. He's then talking to some guy on the phone. I don't know if this was Drummond. I I think. I I don't know. I'm thinking it was supposed to be. I don't know. Meet him at Milton in some parking garage. Van Damme throws the phone out the window. He gets to the garage. He goes over to the car, sees the dude is dead in the car, and then there's so many guys cornering him that uh, they basically take him out, put a shot in his neck, and knock him out. Some older guy steps out, the Sandman. They tell him he's <laughs> clean. There's some special agent in the car talking with the this older guy. He knows Wheeler. Wheeler is Van Dam. He wants to talk to him, but the guy won't let him. It seems like they want to do things his way. They're at the docks. Ferris is Sandman. That's his name, we find out. He's talking to another guy named Kingsley. Uh, Edward Rhodes is the CIA agent who's overseeing this interrogation. They see a sub. Everyone talks about how it was decommissioned and how it's uh, just been a rumor about this. 
and then it's basically non-existent. And as far as the CIA is concerned, it was never here. <laughs> That's yeah. The plot of this movie is great. Oh yeah, secret. Man. Underwater submarine prison. <laughs> Hell yeah. I actually did like that a lot. Oh, well, that's kind of original, so I'm not sure why you would make one of those. But yeah, right? Would, imagine like, the cost of that. Oh, and I'm like, you would, you would, you know, you would just execute the people, I would assume, if it's like a black yeah, site. Yeah, right? But. It's uh, a little kind of like the uh, floating prison in the Avengers. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Uh, they're on the boat, or they're on the sub. They talk about another pickup who is being wheeled in a wheelchair with a hood over his head. It's another John Doe. Don't worry about it. Uh, they're looking at all the prisoner rooms. We find out Dolph's name is Marco. He's doing some push-ups in his cell. They show the the empty cell to the guys. They tell Kingsley to watch out for Wheeler. He's been trained to do basically anything. You can give him a piece of floss and he'll break out of here. <laughs> They throw Van Damme in the cell and start to go underwater. Dolph is reading the Odyssey, and I was wondering if this was just random or if they thought, like, maybe this movie parallels it, which I I was like... Or it uh, could just be, like, a play on words because they're traveling a big distance in the water. I don't know. Yeah, right? I was trying trying to patch it together, see if there's something could come up. Van Damme, uh, his name is Scott Wheeler. He introduces himself to Marco. Which is weird. You wouldn't think that, you know, black ops... Spy would be like, hey, my name's... Yeah, <laughs> Who are you, mysterious name's other yeah. dangerous prisoner in the submarine? Yep. You're about to meet Weddle and Dax. <laughs> and then these guys come in, they tase him. Uh, Marco was telling them to go easy on him. They threaten him, but he's just talking shit back to him, which is pretty funny. Uh, Ed and Ferris are talking back and forth. Ed is still trying to warn him how torture won't do anything to Van Damme. Ferris tells Van Damme he's an enemy combatant. Give him the drive and everything he knows, and he will make a deal. You have an ID on you? Excuse me? ID. <laughs> and then he shows it to Van Damme. He tells him he doesn't have the drive. And then tells him that he and someone were undercover to give it to Drummond, but someone got to it first. They think the whole thing's a setup to have his lady killed, Ballard. They threaten to stick a needle into his eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's your buyer? <laughs> Just do it. And uh, he's about to do it. And he's like, ah, Ed, get in here. Uh, this girl on the sub walks out of the interrogation. This is Taylor, Agent Taylor. She was trying to get in with uh, CIA, and uh, she got stuck on a sub instead. Same old story. Yep. This is the story of a girl. <laughs> <laughs> she knows Van Dam, and she's talking with her partner, Ryan, Agent Ryan, and he's like, she's like, he's a legend. So what? Now he's a traitor? And for whatever reason... She saw him when they brought him to the farm or whatever they called it when she was a recruit. Ed talks with Van Dam. They don't trust us. Ed tells him, use it for your leverage. Get the dongle. I love that they <laughs> called it a dongle. Yeah, it's my favorite word. And just give him a location. He agrees to give it to only Ed, no one else. And then Ed takes out Ferris and his men right after. <laughs> CIA agent's gone rogue. Says he can make the rest of the guys on the boat extremely wealthy if they listen to him. Van Damme already knew what was happening, though. Where is it, Scott? (laughs) Van Damme dislocates his thumb to get out of the handcuffs. A guy has a knife to his nuts. The two (laughs) agents, uh, Taylor and Ryan, open the door, get shot at. Van Damme gets out of the cuffs, kills the one dude with the knife to his nuts, breaks through the glass, and takes out more dudes. The two agents pull their guns on him, but... uh, Taylor ends up shooting the lock to lock the guys in. She tells him to put his hands behind his head. They were talking back and forth. She doesn't really know what to do, but then all of a sudden she tells Ed that she has him. I was wondering why you would do that after you just got shot at by those guys. Yeah. But, you know, that's just uh, I'm also wondering why the soldiers on the ship instantly decided to switch sides when... Obviously, you can't really trust this guy who just shot, you know, a bunch of... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, hmm, okay. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it's a submarine prison, so we don't really... It's not our area of expertise. Uh, you know, that's uh, our area is Jean-Claude Van Damme films yep. and podcast form. So <laughs> the, the, the bad guys come out of the, the door. The agents are gone. They tell the ship to shoot Agent Ryan and Taylor if they see them. And Marco says, son of a bitch, in his cell <laughs> and smiles. <laughs> Van Damme tells them, either we do this together or I do it alone. Rhodes needs me. He doesn't need you. 
He takes the gun from Taylor as he's saying this and has it pointed at them. He asks if there's any weapons in their little uh, bunk room. They shake their heads. He's like, oh, come on, man. So he (laughs) finds one and gives her the gun. And then he's like, drop the guns, please. She tells him if he does anything wrong, she'll kill him. Taylor's making the way around the ship. Then there's Ryan following her. One guy's in hiding. Ed tells him if you see her, take the shot. She sees the cord to the communication device was cut. The guys see it's Ryan. He's about to shoot. Ryan gets it in the neck. Yeah. And then the gunfire starts. Uh, Van Damme's like, don't talk, as he's putting pressure on the wound. (laughs) (laughs) But then he he realizes, you know, he can't do two things at once, so he apologizes, starts shooting. Ryan's bleeding out. But he's still alive. Yeah, Yeah, I know. A a neck wound like that. So Ryan's still alive. The bad guys go up to him. Sorry, kid. It's just business. And then they shoot him. (laughs) So he's not alive anymore. Taylor is mad that Van Damme let Ryan die. He apologizes and said that's the job. But he said it a little bit nicer than the way I just wrote that. (laughs) Uh, Van Damme tells her that they need to make them come to them. Two guys down the way are talking to each other. One guy starts walking towards them. Van Damme easily takes one dude out with a knife. It was absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. They're talking about creating enough pressure to cause a leak. The guys in the control room see something is going on in the engine room. We have a problem. And they're like, the computer? No, someone did it manually. One guy ends up getting smashed by a water pressure bursting out. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been my favorite. Yeah, probably. Oh, that was awesome. The sirens going on. They want to try and contain the leak. Van Damme opens the door. Taylor gets shot by his son. JC and Chris start fighting. Chris pulls out a knife, cuts his dad, gets a little blowed, and his head <laughs> slammed into the wall, but he's not dead. He uh, took me a second to recognize him because he, yeah, he uh, shaved his head shaved his and he head, had grew a big beard. Hair, yeah. He did look more intimidating. I'll give he him did. That. Yeah, he can, for real. You can kind of tell from the eyes, though. He has the same eyes. Yep. That's exactly it. They go into the infirmary. She's taking care of herself while they're talking. Van Damme tells her what's in the files. It's an algorithm detailing how to activate sleeper agents. If it falls into <laughs> the wrong hands, the wrong people, it's over. <laughs> I might have exaggerated that. They fixed the leak, but they need to go to a periscope level. I see you brought the rookie. How do you know that? No one else down here wears that cheap perfume. <laughs> Probably a little uh, Silence of the Lambs there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're trying to recruit Marco. He's KSK, German Special Forces. He knows they won't exactly let him go if he helps. Dolph plays uh, Germans a lot in movies. Yeah, he does. Well, he's a gigantic blonde person. So. That's true. The captain tells Kingsley he's taking it, uh, the sub up. Things aren't going as planned. They get Marco out. Everyone is loading up on weapons now. Ed is now talking to the captain, telling him one of his guys used to be one of them. He's asking for a little more time to neutralize the situation. He says he will stop going afloat, but he needs to verify a few things. Meanwhile, the guys check. See Taylor on the ground. She looks dead. She stabs a guy into uh, into his foot with the knife. Yeah. Take out all the other guys. That was a crazy fight scene. Uh-huh. That was, uh, it was good. You know, it's weird how in modern Band Aid movies, they tend to go for more like CQC style. Like, yeah, you know, man. More MMA style it was like yep. a triangle choke. Yeah, Van Damme did a triangle yeah. choke. He's <laughs> elbowing the dude. He's elbowing uh, Dax or whatever on the top of the head. I love each time he's elbowing, the spot gets yeah. growing and growing. <laughs> it was so, so interesting. So cool. There's only like one or two kicks in the entire movie yeah. from Van Damme, too. Yeah, really. It was, I think, I think Lundgren did more kicks than Van yeah, Damme in this film. Yeah, I think film. so, too. The captain says the story checks out, but they're still ordered to dock at Havana. And he's like, you bought yourself some more time. Kingsley talks with Wheeler. They easily take out everyone. Where's Rhodes? Fuck you. Marco <laughs> says he's going to have some alone time with Kingsley and Wheeler and Taylor take off. You see, like, that made no sense to me whatsoever. Yeah. Was like, well, you know, we ran out of time for Dolph to be in the movie, so. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. They get into the control room. Guns drawn on everyone. Van Damme offers his gun to the captain. The captain tells Rhodes he's going to take his gun. Ed now makes him a hostage, shoots him in the leg. Captain orders they take up the ship, drop the sidearms, kick him over to me. Chris comes up behind Taylor and points a gun at her. She puts the gun on the table. Agent Ballard! No, she double-crossed him. Dun, dun, dun. I saw you die. You saw what you wanted to see. Chris was the one who was standing over her when he was going to execute her. She was the John Doe on the boat. She makes him drop his gun. They all are trying to decide what to do. The phone rings. Coordinates are locked in. They want this to be easy so the men can come on board. There's guys making their way on a boat. 
Amuse me. Was any of it real? The sex wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes over to him. She kisses him and turns on the walkie. And he's like, you're crazy. <laughs> and then Ed tells Ballard to kill Taylor. Scott says it's in a de- the, the dongle's in a deposit box. Things go crazy. People get punched and shot and hit. Ballard fights Van Damme. She shoots him. Chris gets shot by the captain. He shoots the captain. It's absolute mayhem. It was. It was you know, quite the Mexican standoff it, gone crazy there. It yeah. was, man. In such a tight room, in a room that was yeah. probably about the size of our studio. I can only imagine, like, how loud that oh, was. Everyone's ears would be yeah. ringing. Oh, and my And then, God. Like, I'm, like, the ricochets, too, you would think. That's, that's exactly like, what I was thinking. Everywhere on this boat, I'm just thinking of ricochets. Yeah. And pew, pew, just, pew, pew, yep. you know. Ed is choking Taylor with a core, telling Ballard to shoot her. Ballard just leaves. Van Damme shoots Ed. Van Damme was also shot in the scuffle. Ballard is making her way up to the top. They follow. They get up. Uh, there's guys already on the sub. They arrest Taylor and Wheeler. Ballard was somewhere else. They couldn't find her. They're now at the Pentagon. There's a dude sitting behind a desk. He's like, this is one of the biggest fuck-ups that has ever come across my desk. <laughs> uh, they've been trying to track down Ballard since the sub. They've pinpointed her location, but she just can't seem to find her. Wherever she's been, she's been careful. And we see while he's talking, she's just withdrew a lot of money from some bank or whatnot and and basically a duffel bag and she takes it out to her car she has a wig on uh we see that taylor and wheeler are now partners and right when taylor's walking out he's like excuse me uh, agent taylor and she's like huh she's like you know all the prisoners were accounted for except one there was a missing german prisoner do you know anything about it she's like no <laughs> ballard's in her car someone knocks on the window she's like no 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 leave me alone no 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 and then he just shoots her. It was Marco. He calls Wheeler and he goes, consider us even. <laughs> Which I forgot to mention during the Kingsley thing, right when they're leaving, he goes, I guess this means I owe you one. <laughs> He's like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> so uh, Wheeler tells Marco, stay out of trouble. And uh, then he's talking with uh, Taylor. She's saying, so where did you hide the dongle? He's like, I went to the bank and I put it in a safety deposit box. She's like, are you for real? He's like, yeah. He goes, this spy thing, it's really shitty stuff. <laughs> shitty motel room, shitty day in and day out, shitty breakfast. And they laugh and walk off. <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, getting into some trivia here. Uh, just a little bit. This will be the fifth collaboration of Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren. Past films include Universal Soldier, Universal Soldier Regeneration, Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning, and The Expendables <laughs> 2. Jean-Claude Van Damme and Patrick Kilpatrick appear together in Death Warrant. Those are the only two bits of trivia. I think this movie's still a little bit too new to have more trivia. Yeah. So that's it. That was Blackwater. I don't think there's any quotes at all either, too. Doesn't look like it. Um, but yeah, what, what were your thoughts about this? Well, I was extremely, uh, came in without high expectations. I got horrible reviews on IMDb. Everywhere. And then, uh, yeah, like Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes, yuck, man. They, they panned this movie, but. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a great movie, but it wasn't that bad. Like, yeah. I know that's not exactly a ringing endorsement, but I mean, I wasn't, you know, just like, oh, God, the whole time. It was a passable, uh, sort of played by numbers. Uh, modern Van Damme movie, although it had more uh, humor in it than most modern Van Damme movies, so I yeah. did, did enjoy that about it. And it had Dolph, so it makes it passable. As far as, if you're a Van Damme fan, I do recommend this film. Oh, definitely, I I agree with you. If you're a Van Damme fan, you're, you're gonna like it. I mean, it is paint by numbers Van Damme uh, in his later films. Not not terribly. I agree with you. I, I think the critics were a little bit too harsh on it, but I also agree in the sense that. There's nothing new about this film. And that... the plot twists were mainly stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you kind of saw it that Ballard was going to be at the end. Mm-hmm. It, it just Because, like, they didn't it's... show her getting shot in the head and, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, not bad, though. I, I mean, yeah, I Yeah, not bad, not great. I don't know if I'll watch it again. You know, maybe if, it, if I ever saw it. I know now in 2018 I don't have cable, but... I was like, if I ever saw it on TV, I'd probably watch mm-hmm. it. But I mean, if it had more Dolph time, yeah, that's what I was really missing. Like, if he was in like two or three fight scenes, I think that would have upped this by a good uh, star or two, you know, or split or two. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I really, I really do wish it had more uh, Dolph in it. I was a little bit because I, I read one of the reviews and the guy basically said Dolph was only in it for the first ten minutes and then that's it. And that's I was not like, true. I mean, he was he had ten minutes of screen time. He had ten minutes of screen time. Yeah, yeah. It was so. intersected well though, like yeah. for the amount of time it was. They, you know, you could tell that he only was basically it was base almost a cameo though. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was it was right above a cameo. Yeah, just like Patrick Kilpatrick in this. Yeah, that one kind of blew me away yeah. because he even had some some decently top billing in it compared mm-hmm. to the rest of them. That's so weird. Dolph has top billing in this film. I know, I know. That's like, I don't so understand. Crazy. Yeah, even in like the opening credits, they like Dolph Lundgren's first in the cat. You know, like starring Dolph. Lundgren. It was very strange. Yeah. Yeah, very strange. I agree with you. Thinking, geez, how much did you pay Dolph compared to Van Damme? Yeah, as well. Is he like a? Is he a bigger star at this point? I wouldn't think so. I I wouldn't think so either, to be honest. Besides the Expendables, Dolph hasn't and, really uh, been anything uh, uh, that's been released in the theaters, has he? Uh, he's gonna be in the new Creed. Oh yeah, that's as right. Ivan Drago, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ivan so, Drago. Yeah, that's right. That's maybe that has something geez, to do with it. Uh, I wouldn't think so though. I wouldn't think so either. But whatever. All right, so now it's time we get into our reviews. So I guess uh, usually I asked you to go first. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll just go first. We'll Do switch it. it up here. So I I liked it. I was entertained. Uh, it wasn't uh, nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. The mm-hmm. way that the critics made it seem like I thought we were going to be reviewing another derailed. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't think it was like that at all. I. I enjoyed it. There's not much else to say about it. I would, uh, I would probably give it a good seven splits out of ten, maybe six and a half. Mm-hmm. Nothing, it's nothing crazy. Just another Van Damme beat 'em up film. Turn your brain off and just enjoy. What about you? Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, if it wasn't for Dolph being in it and the little, you know, little touches of humor, which I really, I prefer, you know, comedic relief in my Van Damme movies. I probably yeah. wouldn't have liked it nearly as much. Um, there are little touches I did like. Like I liked how they they had excellent like squib work. The blood squibs yeah, in this were great. Yeah, they were. You're right. Um, when do you get uh, the reaction of the blood splatter from the one guy onto the other yeah. guy's face? And he's like, <laughs> he wipes it off and starts <laughs> shooting again. I, I really like that. There are other little touches I enjoyed. Like I'm a gun nut, so I liked how everyone actually uh, held the guns at a more like they all used trigger discipline. They kept their index fingers yeah. off the uh, you know like everyone held it in a more conventional you know modern tactical fashion even van damme did like uh he didn't line up the sides or anything but it's you know most action stars don't so you can see their face yeah yeah exactly but uh yeah i mean um i wouldn't go out to watch it again but it was an enjoyable film i'd probably give it i'm a little below i'd probably give it like six or maybe 6.5 spots. yeah yeah it's not too far off from one another here no i mean perfectly passable but not something I would like go out and you know like Rewatch. seek out yeah seek yeah. out to watch yeah no I I agree with you I'm not gonna seek but I mean for whatever reason I get if you can watch this for free like I know it's free in a here in the states on Amazon Amazon Prime so yeah I mean go ahead and watch it there if you can watch for free any other way I would recommend that I wouldn't go out and buy a Blu-ray of this or anything no not not one I mean I would to support Van Damme but yeah right no I did see when we were at Meyer and Meyer's our local like think Walmart I guess basically yeah for those listening and it was it released at, and they actually had like a big thing about it uh not not like terribly big but almost mm-hmm. like it was from a mo- like a theater uh-huh. right? and they're like oh hey you know it's on sale and i'm thinking usually these van damme films that go straight to dvd you never they, see them unless they're in like a compilation yeah, yeah seriously it's like the only way you can find it is online so i was really surprised that it, that my store actually had a decent amount of them and they were like they marked it on sale, like the DVD I think was on sale for fifteen dollars, and I'm going, oh my gosh, it's not fifteen dollars to begin with. Like, yeah, it actually, seems they're like it's sell a legitimate for 20 movie. Bucks. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. cool. So yeah, I, I mean, I give it to them that way. I I was surprised to see that, but who knows? I don't know. Um, I'm very excited about the bouncer. the The trailer for that yes. looks so much it looks better really than really interesting the trailer for Blackwater. You know, no offense to Blackwater, but I'm I'm very excited to see it. It's it's apparently already released in September of this year, 
September twenty yeah, second, limited or theatrical release over here. I think. Yeah, yeah. So at least it has theatrical release though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll see. We'll see what happens with it. I'm hoping it will come out. I just I just looked up on my phone to see if we can watch it anywhere first, and uh, I, there's nothing. So it's still kind of I guess in that theater run. Mm-hmm. So we'll see uh, where it's at uh, within the next couple of months. In the meantime, I think we've already mentioned we'll probably be doing some other episodes where we're talking about kickboxer sequels and whatnot. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. Uh, October's been an extremely busy month. Yes. But uh, November, hopefully, will be a little bit more of a slowdown. So We'll have our, our gobble cast. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for listening. I am John. And I am Jeff. You've been listening to another episode of the Jean Pod Van Damme cast. Jeff, you let him die. <laughs>